Okay, next up we have Billy from Cosmos. Cosmos is built with Tendermint, and is a proof of state, stake network that's quite famous. Um, they also aim to connect different chains together through the concept of the Cosmos Hub and IBC, which is what Billy's gonna be talking about. So take it away. Cheers. Hi there, um, my name is Billy. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to give a shout out to ZK Validator by a certain Anna in the audience. Uh, we did a successful hub upgrade today and we're all really excited about it. So let's give a round of applause for her really quick. <laughs> Cool, so uh, I'm not actually gonna talk about Cosmos today. I'm gonna talk about inter-blockchain communication. Uh, it is something that has to do with the interchain. Uh, the reality is that the polycentric interchain is already here, and as William Gibson might say, it's just not evenly distributed. I think a theme that we've already seen today is the idea of a hub and spoke model with multiple application-specific blockchains connected with different trust assumptions in different ways. Um, it's really validating to see that this concept, which we've been working on for years, is getting embraced by so many people. We really believe in it. As part of that, uh, we think that an important feature of it is a, a trustless standard for communicating between these different chains, whether it's part of Waves, whether it's part of Polkadot, whether it's Ethereum or whatever. Uh, and that's what IBC is all about. IBC is simply a messaging protocol for the interchain. And the interchain is just this concept of every possible blockchain being connected like the internet. The internet is not one big computer, it's a bunch of individual computers that have their own choice of operating systems, their own choice of how they're run, why they're run, what are their resources, who all connect based on the same protocol, TCP IP. They don't have to know or care about the other things, they can make their own decisions, their own assumptions about how they interact with them. So there's three big parts about IBC, and that's transportation, authentication, and ordering. So often we refer to it as IBC TAO, similar again to TCP IP. But basically they break down into concepts of clients, connections, channels, packets, and modules. Uh, clients are like clients. This is an essential feature of IBC communication. The two chains communicating with each other need to have some version of a like client of each other in order to verify the proofs that come along with this packet. It really did come from where it says it's coming from. The next thing is connections. That's just essentially once there's been a proof between two blockchains via IBC, they have a connection to each other. After that connection is established, they're able to create channels. Channels are essentially where those packets travel through. Those packets contain serialized byte data. The protocol itself is completely agnostic to what you store inside that data. But modules is where that actual application decides what is that content, what do I do with it. So again, I mentioned clients. These are verifying the consensus transcripts. Uh, one of the other requirements basically for IBC is this idea that it has fast finality so you don't have chain reorganizations. Uh, but essentially, being able to verify the headers of that other chain is, is the other essential feature. So uh, currently, IBC is uh, focusing on supporting tenement-like clients, but every other protocol out there that has a like client is, uh, is fair game. Uh, associating two chains, I mentioned this is connections. Channels is basically that data pipe. Packets is where all the action is at. This is uh, basically where you get to decide what's happening when these two chains talk to each other. So I'm going to quickly walk you through exactly what IBC would look like if you were to use the Cosmos SDK. Just one of the many choices for building application-specific blockchains. It's written in Golang. Uh, if you have the choice or the decision to make your blockchain in another framework, we fully encourage that. We like to think that the uh, SDK is a really viable option, though. Uh, but essentially, a module is like a smart contract. You know, it's tightly coupled logic and storage. Inside of some module, you might be doing something. Maybe it's a smart contract module. So maybe it's like Waves. You have all sorts of contracts that are deployed there doing their own execution environment. One of them might decide to communicate with another blockchain. They'd be able to create an IBC packet inside of the IBC module, which is essentially a place that a, life, uh, a light client exists. Uh, that IBC packet would get packaged with this light, uh, light client proof. Here's sort of a diagram of what a blockchain looks like when you have the consensus mechanism, Tendermint in the middle with all these different modules or types of contracts or types of interactions happening for whatever reason that blockchain exists, it's doing. Um, and then it gets relayed across uh, a network of other blockchains. This relay takes place by a relayer. This is sort of an independent third party. It could be a, somebody you pay, somebody yourself. Uh, it's basically a disinterested third party, possibly. It's a little bit like message relaying um, with Ethereum. It uh, doesn't really matter how it gets from blockchain A to blockchain B. Once it arrives, it basically replays that entire process backwards, gets included in a block by whatever consensus mechanism is there. In this instance, it's Tendermint goes into the IBC module. Uh, there it's able to be proven that it actually came from the source that it said. And this proof is involved with that 
original sort of like a handshake that establishes the connection and then establishes the channel. Once it's verified, it can be handed over to the module where it's deserialized and it actually does the thing that it was intended to do. So whether that's a token transfer, whether that's a vote across chains, anything. Uh, and so that opens up a lot of interesting use cases. Uh, at the IBC app level, this is the application level where the actual serialization and processing takes place. Uh, the most simple you could think of is a token transfer. You know, this is the most basic idea of sending value from one chain to another. Uh, but you can also do really interesting things with account abstractions. So you could have an entire blockchain represent yourself. The blockchain can own uh, coins on another chain. It can use those coins to delegate to a validator. It can participate in governance. This is a bit like a, a, a multi-sig on, on steroids. Uh, you can imagine distributing the trust of, of an account in that way. Also, uh, interchain co code relocation. This is the sort of transport of contracts and packets. So if you wanted to have discrete uh, environments, virtual machines communicating between each other, these packets can be used in that arbitrary manner. They're completely uh, agnostic to the content. Uh, it's also a viable solution for scaling. Uh, we like to think that instead of trying to scale vertically by building bigger and better, you should scale horizontally. Uh, have a bunch of uh, different chains that use this IBC packet to communicate between each other, essentially sharding without a centralized authority that validates the entire thing. Uh, so if you're interested in IBC and the standards, you should check out the Interchain Standard Protocol. It's under Cosmos ICS. We're the shepherds of this uh, standard. If you want to dive deeper, there's a quick references. We now have an alpha implementation out. Uh, we're currently going through audits on the formal verification. Um, and if you want to try actually sending IBC transactions on an instance of Gaia, you should clone that and try it out in that PR. Uh, we're also hiring. If this interests you at all, please get a hold of us. Uh, and we're really excited to support IBC across the network. Like I said, IBC is sort of an agnostic and trustless system. It actually has nothing to do with Cosmos in a lot of ways. Cosmos could disappear and IBC continue to uh, exist. There's no token lock-in. There's nothing about using Cosmos or Atoms that necessitates the use of IBC. We want it to be a true protocol. We want it to be truly supported. And so we realize for that to be the case, there has to be no ecosystem lock-in. Also, I want to tell you about Game of Zones. Uh, so as IBC develops, we're going to be running it through the same uh, intensive um, testing system that we did for the Cosmos Hub itself last year. Uh, we're going to be running an adversarial test network of chains communicating via IBC. It will be a contest as well. Uh, there will be different um, objectives by running nodes inside this network, trying to attack each other, do different malicious or positive behavior inside the network. You'll be able to win atoms. There will be 100,000 atoms given away by this. Uh, it's also a really great way to just get oriented with the system. If you're working on another protocol or another project and you're interested in supporting IBC, maybe it can save you some work while you're doing your own version of it. Uh, this is a great way to get accustomed to all of it. Uh, I invite all of you to participate. Thank you very much.